learning from the Associated Press that Israeli ground forces moved into southern Lebanon this Tuesday, marking a significant escalation of an offensive against Hezbollah militants. This also opened a new front in a year-long war against its Iranian-backed adversaries. Meanwhile, the Lebanese army says it redeployed troops in some observation points along the border with Israel. Joining us live this morning to further discuss this breaking news alert is Dr. Asaf Ramarwaski, the Executive Director of Scholars for Peace in the Middle East. Dr. Asaf, always a pleasure having you join our show. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So learning of this news, it has a lot of people on edge, especially world leaders. They are worried that this ground offensive could be the straw that tips the camel's back to basically start that full out war. Could you break this down for us? Sure. So let's put it into context, of course. It's important to contextualize that over the past uh, few days, we've seen uh, a taking out of the entire top brass of Hezbollah. But namely, it's, it's worthy of note that Hassan Nasrallah, the uh, CEO of Hezbollah, was taken out over the weekend, uh, over on Friday, actually, uh, when Benjamin Netanyahu was here in the States. Uh, that caused really a ripple effect uh, within the Hezbollah leadership. It's important to contextualize as well that he has been the leader for the past 32 years, and Hezbollah alone is uh, the group that has more American and more Western blood on its hand than any other organization. I think that, you know, statistically speaking, uh, more Americans were killed by Hezbollah uh, up before before 9-11 was Hezbollah's responsibility uh, until 9-11 came about. Uh, so what you're seeing now is a really an, is a continuation, but an acceleration of uh, what we've seen to date. And the reason the Israelis went into Lebanon, besides, of course, um, moving ahead and kind of dismantling the terror threat that has been waging on the Israelis for years now, not notwithstanding the fact that they, of course, also started, been part uh, of the war itself almost a year ago, is the fact that their citizens have not been able to go home to the north. I mean, you have close to 80,000 Israeli citizens who've been displaced as a result of the war. They have not been able to return back to their homes, and they've not been able to secure that border. So what we have now is, of course, and it's also important to note uh, that there's been since beginning of the war in 10-7, there's been a constant barrage of rockets, about close to 10,000 rockets that have been, uh, fr you know, thrusted upon uh, the Israeli population in the northern part of Israel. So, and the goal has been to create this consistent, safe buffer zone beyond the Latani River. I mean, the 1701, which is the UN resolution that calls for the Hezbollah to move 10 kilometers beyond the Latani River, it's not enough for the Israelis. So what you're seeing now is beyond the Air Force strikes, which have been phenomenal. We've seen phenomenal intelligence, uh, actionable intelligence as a, as a result of the pager operation to the top leadership of Hezbollah taken out. Now we're seeing a move where they actually have to establish the border because let's also not forget the fact that in contrast to Hamas in the south, Hezbollah still has and had from the beginning close to 200,000 long-range missiles with guidance precision systems in them. That means that they have, and Hamas only, you know, when Hamas started this war uh, back on 10-7, they only had 30,000. So we'll put it into context about how how much of a threat this is. We've already seen missiles go going into center parts of Israel that is even reaching parts of Tel Aviv. So that's the context and the extent of the threat, which is why you're now seeing Israelis calling up troops, moving uh, their, uh, you know, moving into a ground operation. Again, the goal is not a long-term stay. Israel has been with Lebanon at war with Lebanon for formerly two wars, one in 82 and then another one in 2006. All, of course, Hezbollah was a key ingredient with, but they do want to reestablish safety in the north. Great points you're making this morning, Dr. Asaf. And I'm glad you mentioned the weapons aspects because we know at this hour there is concern about Iran's relationship with Hezbollah. Specifically, since the elimination of Hezbollah's leader, Iran has been very vocal to say they will help pick the next leader, but also focused on potential retaliation from Iran as the conflict with Israel and Hezbollah ramps up. 
Well, that is correct. And so, look, Iranian footprints have been on, uh, you know, have been involved with this since the beginning. Uh, nothing is new here in, in that regard. It's just a question of how much uh, Iran is going to have an active role in this, as we saw back in April when Iran itself waged ballistic missiles onto Israel. It's also important to note that as of this morning, uh, Hassan Nasrallah's cousin, uh, Safadin, has been appointed uh, as the successor to Nasrallah. Uh, again, he's been on the blacklist and the terror list of the U.S. since 2017. He was the head of the executive council uh, of Hezbollah. He's also part of the Jihad Committee. Uh, again, an individual which is uh, similar, you know, in, in you know, in mentality and ideology uh, to his cousin Hassan Nasrallah, and, and of course, you know, vows to continue uh, the kind of ongoing barrage of of, of, uh, of attacks on Israel with the same kind of fury and the same kind of ideology, which is anti-Semitic, anti-American, anti-Western. I mean, again, these are all part of the carbon copy of what Hezbollah has established. So it's no surprise that the same kind of individual was selected. And again, this all goes to your point back, they're all taking their direct orders back from the Islamic Republic of Iran. So as Iran continues to call the shots from Tehran, Hezbollah is gonna take the brunt of it, but they're gonna continue on because Iran continues to fund them. And there is a strong you know, desire to create a sense of strength and retaliation for what has taken place over the past uh, few days now. Dr. Asaf, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for joining us bright and early this Tuesday morning. Uh, before we let you go, anything we need to be keeping a watchful eye on as this uh, escalation continues this morning? No, this border is what we need to be continuing watching very, very carefully. Uh, this is not a simple operation. It may not be uh, a long-term permanent solution as far as the Israelis are not looking to, you know, reestablish any kind of uh, war with, with Lebanon. But it's a this is a war that's been going on uh, since last year for sure. Uh, and the, this is un, it's an untenable situation for the Israelis. So until they establish really safety and security in the north, you will see an escalation of this and the Israelis will do whatever it takes uh, to continue this uh, and to ensure the safety of its civilians. Dr. Asaf, thank you so much for your expertise and perspective. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you as always.